So in uh, today's class, I am going to give you an overall. Uh, am I audible, guys? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes okay. So in today's class, I am going to just give you an uh, overview of uh, what we have seen in all the previous classes for the whole unit one. As we have completed unit one. I'm going to give a small, quick revision of all the uh, topics we have seen as a summary of the unit one. And then I will post one uh, question bank in your Moodle classroom. You have to practice all the questions today and tomorrow. Probably on Friday, you will be having a test on CO1 for your internal. Like your IAT, you will be having a test. OK, fine. So uh, in the very first beginning class, we have seen the prerequisite for the subject and what is design and what are the aspects of design that is to be considered. And then where the design concepts is, are used in the industry, we have seen. And uh, we have seen what is machine design. So according to this uh, subject, we are going to uh, see the procedure for designing the components in the machine. Okay. So what are the uh, what is the definition for a machine design and what is the objective of this course and then overview of this course like COs and internal assessment and uh, uh, suggested uh, books for reference all such things we have seen in the very first beginning class and then in the lecture one we have seen the general design process okay what is the design process what are the different types of designs innovative development adaptive reverse designs and what do you call rational empirical and industrial design and where where are uh, these design concepts are coming in the industrial sequence of process flow we have seen that and then we have seen uh, where it is used in the industries it is used in the hand calculations part of the r and d division and then we have seen the uh, general design process, a sequence of operations uh, to be carried out in the design process. Okay, and we have seen the same design process explained by different people, like uh, Steven Skimmit, what he's saying about design process, and then Shigley, and then Jarji Dieter. Okay, so all of them were defined the general design process but in what way they differed we have seen and also uh, i have given some links for in detail reference of embodiment design which is one major part in the design process okay so you may you may go through these links of uh, the occ course i have handled in the last uh, the last semester okay those who have studied might have uh, had some uh, inputs, but uh, uh, only 20 of you have joined the course. So others may refer these links for better insight into the embodiment design. And then we have seen factors uh, to be considered in the machine design, uh, the mechanism, material, forces, and all other uh, factors which has to be considered. Uh, and then materials, engineering materials. You know, what are the engineering materials are much used in the engineering components design. Okay, so what are their classification and what basis they have classified? We have had a, a refresh on that. And then the properties of the materials, mostly we use metallic materials in machine design. So what are the major properties desired, the behavior of um, metallic materials in mechanical loading condition? So that we have seen in this particular lecture. And after that, we have seen what is limit, fit, and tolerance which are related to the manufacturability aspect of the design. So design for manufacturing, what is the design for manufacturing concept and what is manufacturability. And after that, we have seen the limits and the upper limit, lower limit, the terminologies of the limits. And then we have seen allowance, what is allowance, deviation. Uh, in detail, we have seen the types of fit and what are the standards used in the tolerance and fit we have seen. Uh, and then we have see also seen the concept of preferred numbers used in the standardization process. Okay. And then in the next lecture, we have gone into the simple loading condition. You have uh, uh, studied the simple loading condition in the mechanics of material. Uh, what is axial load, lateral load, shear and impact. 
So again, we have had a revision on these uh, loading conditions. And then we have seen the formulations behind each type of loading condition. And then we have seen uh, uh, the problems, simple basic problems, how to approach the problems I have told you. So whenever you start a problem in the machine design, you have to initially identify uh, what is the mode of load that is acting on the component. So based on the mode of load only, you have to select the formula. Either the mode of load is tensile, or the mode of load is direct shear, or torsion, or bending, whatever may be the type of load. Based on that, you have to take up the formulas. Okay. If your load is axial bending, then you can go for calculation of stress by directly load by area. If it is lateral, then you have to use the concept of moment equation to find out the stress. And if it is direct shear, you can directly put load by area. If it is torsional shear, then you have to use the torsion equation to calculate the shear stress. And then for impact, we have seen an exclusive formula. Okay. And in the next class, we have continued the simple loading condition problems. We have seen the problems on uh, impact and uh, bending and also a punching problem we have seen. Okay, and then biaxial stress and eccentric loading. So this is one of the important topic. So if you have to consider the biaxial stress, this also we have studied in mechanics of material. We have just applied the problem, applied the concepts in the uh, design, uh, design of the shaft, design problem in this uh, subject. So directly those maximum principal stress, maximum shear stress calculation using the combined stresses. Okay, when you have direct uh, bending load and torsion load, how will you calculate the uh, maximum principal stress and maximum shear stress acting on the body that that we have seen. And then we have started to see about eccentric loading. What is eccentric loading? When you apply a load, but not along the axis, but some distance away from the axis, then that is called eccentric loading. So what is the problem? Within this kind of loading, you will be having combined stresses, axial as well as bending. So how you can calculate the stresses when your structure is undergoing for an offset loading condition. Okay, that we have seen and we have seen the problems in that. Okay, uh, the simple problems will come like this kind of column with offset loading or in the next class we have seen uh, this kind of bracket with the, an inclined load. Okay, we have resolved it and solved the problem. Okay, such kind of uh, problem you may expect in this uh, extended loading condition. Um, load need not be inclined uh, it may be horizontal or it may be vertical directly it will be so easier to solve if it is inclined then you have to resolve it as horizontal and vertical and then you have to solve okay and then i have also told you some aspects of a bolt concept uh, in the in the, in this lecture but we have not seen any problem in this why because uh, this kind of problems will come in unit 3 in, in unit 3, you will be studying exclusively how to design the bolts, fasteners, bolts and nuts. Okay, so in such kind of case, uh, only this kind of problem will come. So the same case, the same case problems will also come in the unit 3. Okay, so don't worry, we will study the problems of this kind in unit 3. And then we have gone into the failure theories. Uh, we have seen major five failure theories used in the metallic materials. Uh, the limitation is it is applicable for metallic materials and then uh, it is also applicable for biaxial kind of stress condition. Okay, so what is left hand side, what is right hand side, uh, everything we have seen. What is induced stress, what is uh, maximum uh, permissible stress in the material, uh, how do we compare in the failure theories that we have seen in this uh, lecture. And you have, have all you can have access to all the formulas in your design data book. You don't have to memorize any formulas of theories of failure. And then we have seen the problems from theories of failure. We have seen one solid problem. In that, we have seen all the theories to be executed for designing the size of the bolt. And then finally, we have compared all the theory and we have selected which one has maximum dimension, which, are, which means which is more conservative in the dimension. And uh, next, the, we, we have discussed about the stress concentration. So when you have a member with a hole or a groove or a keyway or an eye hole, uh, there will be, when you load that material, there will be stress concentration in nearby that uh, um, feature like holes and grooves. So how that can be considered? 
in the design that's what we have seen in this topic so we have we have used the graph standard graphs for our different cases of uh, problem we have seen and for every case we have a different graph standard graph from those standard graph we can calculate the stress concentration factor by using the stress concentration factor and nominal stress which is the stress which is acting on the, uh, the stress which is acting on the minimum cross section area by using that value and uh, stress concentration factor we can calculate maximum stress induced in the material okay so we have seen the applications of that then causes of stress concentration and then remedies what kind of remedies you can do in the uh, design process uh, for avoiding the stress concentration we have seen it and also we have seen the problems of plate with the hole and in the next lecture we have seen two other problems okay plate with uh, a yeah, yeah, step brush shaft with the fillet okay so with that we have understood how the stress concentration can be calculated and then finally we moved on to the fatigue failure so in case of fatigue failure uh, when variable loading uh, uh, when a load that is varying with respect to time is acting on the material uh, how the stresses are induced uh, when it is repeatedly periodically or symmetrically acting on the material how we can uh, find the failure we have seen initially how the failure of uh, fatigue is happening and then causes of fatigue failure and then how the yes and curve uh, in, in the normal static loading condition we have sustain curve to decide the properties of the static properties of the material but whereas in cyclic properties we have we have to use uh, sn curve so how this sn curve is uh, prepared by using the testing procedure what is the test procedure and how the curve is generated we have seen and what is endurance limit that is extracted from the sn curve we have seen that as well and different types of uh, cyclic load and the formulation for mean stress alternating stress and uh, uh, other things we have seen and also we have seen the factors which are affecting the uh, the properties like the uh, endurance limit so how we can include these properties when we do the calculation for different cases different surface finish different size and different type of cyclic load okay because i told you the endurance limit was calculated by using cyclic bending uh, so if you go for application of cyclic axial load then how cyclic axial load then how it can be considered okay then you have to multiply the endurance limit with some factors okay so that's what we have seen in the problem as well okay then we have seen what is not the sensitivity to calculate the fatigue stress concentration factor and then we have seen the failure theories for cyclic loading that is three failure theories soderberg goodman and gerber so much used failure theories are soderberg and goodman so soderberg is preferentially used for ductile material and goodman is used for putting material okay and then this is what the case we have seen the failure theories and then we started the problems uh, we have seen four problems uh, with the axial uh, cyclic loading and then lateral cyclic loading bending cyclic load and then we have seen the problems on torsional cyclic load so we have seen the cyclic load effect separately okay what is the major difference in all these cases the calculation of maximum and minimum stresses are different okay in case of axial load you can directly calculate by load by area and in case of bending you have to use the 32m by pi d cube equation that is derived from the moment equation and in case of uh, torsion you have to use 16 16t by pi d cube formula that is used in the that is derived from the torsion equation okay so and then in the last class we have discussed about the combined effect so when you have the combined effect of uh, uh, loading cyclic loading how will you calculate the Uh, dimensions or how will you deal the problem that we have seen in the last class the bending and axial loading okay so we have to consider them separately if you have normal stresses alone and then you have to add them and you have to find the solution so this is what we have seen in the last class and i have also given one 
homework okay i hope all of you have done it keep it i will open an assignment and you post it in the uh, moodle classroom okay maybe today i will open it okay so this is all about the revision of uh, the first unit that we have discussed in the last 3 weeks so if you have uh, any questions now you can ask 